What science is like in North Korea? Isolated from the rest of the world, North Korean researchers struggle to balance rigorous scientific work with the demands of a dictator. When Kim Hyong Soo, 53, got his degree in biology, he hoped to be part of a team that conducted research of global significance. But Hyong Soo was born in North Korea, which had a different mission for him, figure out how great leader Kim Il Sung and his son Kim Jong Il could eat without getting fat. The Kims asked us to identify how they can excrete what they eat without any absorption of calories, Hyong Soo told me through a translator. He and his fellow food scientists worked at a heavily guarded facility, where every project had to be approved by the regime, he said, and they had little access to international science. They tried to understand diseases such as hardening of the arteries, cerebral thrombosis, and cerebral hemorrhage. Without the benefit of being able to build on knowledge that is widespread throughout the rest of the world. Hyong Soo told me he worked at the Mansumu Gong, Long Life Health, Institute, from 1990 to 1995, and that it employed 100 scientists and 30 assistants and animal caretakers at the time. The scientists studied life extension and weight management for the ruling Kim family, even as food was scarce for the average citizen. Whenever they came up with a food that could enhance the health of the dictators, Hyong Soo said it was immediately sent to the Kims. Their work included studies on Italian olive oil, fiber, and a sweet Chinese fruit whose sugar content isn't entirely absorbed by the body, the extracts of which were added to the Kims meals to improve the way they tasted. An entire team conducted research on alcohol and tobacco, which the Kims really enjoyed, he said. Electric fences circled the compound, as the health of the Kims was a state secret. The scientists got free food once a week, but like all scientists in the country, Hyong Soo said he and his colleagues were forbidden from discussing their work. I had a colleague, with a PhD in medicine who told his friends what he was studying. He was arrested as a political prisoner together with his family, he said. Few findings from North Korean scientists make it in international journals so the world knows little about what they do. What we do know comes from defectors and the few foreign scientists who have been invited to the country when the government deemed it necessary to get outside help, such as when Western volcanologists were asked to help monitor the potentially dangerous Mount Pektu. I was introduced to Hyong Soo through Teach North Korean Refugees, a non-profit organization that prepares North Korean refugees for life in South Korea. He left North Korea in 2009, and now lives in Seoul, South Korea. Hyong Soo's experience was similar to that of many researchers in North Korea, absurd, sycophantic, isolated, and stressful. And yet scientists in this country still manage to maintain a leading nuclear weapons program and make other strides, including developing an artificial knee joint, ultrasound machine, and CT scanner. Nuclear and chemical weapons get priority in North Korea, Hyong Soo said, followed by research into the health of the ruling family. Isolation means North Korean scientists have a hard time getting access to the global knowledge base, much less specialized or expensive equipment. When they encounter a problem, the regime expects them to find solutions on their own, Hyong Soo said. Chemists, for instance, find smugglers to sell them reagents brought in from China. American scientist Robert Duane Shelton, who studied what North Korean researchers publish, said that scientists there often do more theoretical work than experiments, which implies that they have inadequate equipment. In the fields of biological sciences, they had obvious access to laboratories, Shelton said. In the physical sciences, though, and engineering, it was more mathematical simulations rather than experimentation which suggests that maybe that they had limited access to those kinds of layouts. Absurd, sycophantic, isolated, and stressful, North Korean scientists must also carry out their research while perpetuating the propaganda that upholds the regime. When they publish in local journals, their articles begin, by citing the teachings of the supreme leaders and extolling the virtues of voluntary research as an honorable, revolutionary task for the people. The findings only take one or two pages, which is short compared to mainstream U.S. scientific journals. A great proportion of the papers are devoted to folk medicine, which is claimed to be effective 95% of the time. 
North Korean scientists are sometimes praised by the regime. Biologist Beek Solhui, who claimed she could make the plant Girium Gol, grow three times bigger, was pronounced a secret hero of the country in 1979. She hoped to manufacture oil from the plant and fix North Korea's oil shortage. The regime promoted her, to chief of the Institute of Biology and Plant Biology at the National Academy of Sciences, according to Hyung Soo, and there was even a film made about her, The Fourteenth Winter, so named in honor of her 14 years of research, during which she dedicated herself to work and remained unmarried. Her so-called achievements were used by the propaganda machine, to praise the country's greatness. North Korean citizens were forced to watch the movie, Hyung Soo said. They had to write reviews and discuss it in open public debates. Eventually, others tried to replicate her study, and it turned out that the plant was smaller rather than larger using her methods. After that, she faced criticism, from the regime. Scientists don't believe what the propaganda feeds them, but they cannot discredit it either. You have to think what the party tells you to think. Today, propaganda is even less effective than it was a few decades ago, as information tends to spread even in North Korea. Most scientists know how to operate a computer, own an FM radio, and use SD cards and thumb drives, which are sometimes brought from China with information from the outside world, Hyung Soo said. Still, disregarding reality, is often a key to survival for North Korean scientists. Those who travel abroad are also subject to the rule of silence. A group of 13 North Korean scientists and scholars went to Germany for a fellowship program that ended in 2008, conducted by the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. Their Western peers found that they were highly capable, but once they returned to North Korea, there was no way to communicate with them. Shelton, who interviewed the German researchers who worked with the North Koreans, said, they lost all contact with them, because getting emails from abroad raises suspicions, and discourages collaboration. The expectation of silence also extends to foreign researchers who spent time in North Korea. These researchers did not want to speak on the record, for fear of jeopardizing their standing with the North Korean government. Foreign scientists who travel to North Korea always have a government-appointed minder watching them and those who plan to return are always careful about what they say. The lack of internet access and freedom in North Korea stifles creativity, innovative development, and consequently, economic growth, said one foreign researcher who traveled to the capital of Pyongyang several times in the past decade. He asked to remain anonymous to preserve his ability to return. A dark-colored crystal worn as jewelry is believed to have healing properties. The quirks of science in North Korea also apply to the medical field. Doctors have limited access to international research and folk medicine is widely used. A dark-colored crystal worn as jewelry is believed to have healing properties, for example. They say when you wear it out in the sunshine, it purifies your blood, said Heidi Linton, executive director of the non-profit Christian Friends of Korea. She adds that North Korean doctors genuinely believed this. They wanted us to take, the crystal, back to Stanford and prove, that it worked. Like doctors in Vietnam and some parts of China, North Koreans often give their patients medicinal herbs, Linton said. They've had nothing to treat them with, other than cordial med, referring to a medicinal liquor. She told me that the doctors there really care about their patients, but many attempts at helping North Koreans get health care have failed, because of red tape and a difficult way of doing business. Linton has been to North Korea 50 times helping patients who suffer from tuberculosis and hepatitis, both of which are epidemics, in the country. She brought them Western medicine, including antibiotics, and she said they understand the necessity of the drugs. However, they still see traditional local cures, such as red ginseng and medicinal herbs, as a source of national pride. If you enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe to Facts Detective and click the bell icon to be updated for the upcoming videos.